Lord be with you, and Merry Christmas. My name is David Osleeson, and I serve as the pastor of this reconciling, welcoming, inclusive, serving congregation known as the First United Methodist Church of Park Ridge. We rejoice in your presence for this service of Christmas Eve. Thanks be to God for you. With the congregation, I invite you to sing the songs, to pray the prayers, to listen to the story, and to rejoice that God's Holy One, the Holy Infant and Holy Savior has been born. Find a candle and let us light it for the singing of Silent Night later in our service. Thanks be to God for our time celebrating Christmas Eve near and far into every household, into every heart, the Christ child is born. Thanks be to God. Again, Merry Christmas. Let the people worship. Amen? Amen. Merry Christmas. My name is Judy Warner. Please join me in the call to Christmas Eve worship. I bring you good news. Unto us a Savior is born. The newborn child is God's greatest gift to humankind. The angels rejoice. The shepherds are not afraid. Blessed is Jesus born in a manger, come to set all people free. On this holy night, may all creation rejoice. All the world receive God's hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. Blessings to you and Merry Christmas. I am Leah Augustiniak. If you'll join with me now in the prayer for Christmas. Gracious God, with joy and thanksgiving, we attend to the gift that is the star child and savior. Our hearts are open to hear again the timeless story of Christ's birth. In the excitement of this night, quiet our fears that we may know the peace and fullness of this holy time. Shine, O light, in the darkness of our world and sing, O angels, in the stillness of our hearts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those who God favors. This we pray in the name of the child of Bethlehem. Amen. The first reading of scripture is Isaiah 9, verses 2 to 3 and 6 to 7. Listen for the word of God. The people who walked in darkness have seen great light. Those who have lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For a child has been born for us a son given to us. 
authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what has been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you join me in prayer? O oh, holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight and hearing. We rejoice in the gift of scripture, the story of our faith in you, O oh God. Bless us with the presence of Christ, our holy infant and holy savior, in whose name we pray, amen. Amen. For the first time in 800 years, a Christmas star is illuminating our skies. How cool is that? On December 21st, the solar system's two largest planets collided in an exceedingly rare event not seen since the Middle Ages. Jupiter and Saturn came so close together that they looked like a double planet, a conjunction that appeared as if, well, from planet Earth, like one bright, super bright point of light. Alignments between these two planets are rather rare, occurring once every 20 years or so, but this conjunction is exceptionally rare because of how close the planets will be to one another, says Patrick Hardigan, astronomer at Rice University. You'd have to go all the way back to just before dawn on March 4th, 1226 to see a closer alignment between these objects visible in the night sky. 1226, 800 years ago. You know, 800 years is approximately the time between the prophecy of Isaiah and the gospel story at the birth of Jesus Christ. For 800 years, the people of God looked to the night sky for what would be named by later believers as the Star of Bethlehem. From the destroyed kingdoms of Israel and Judah, from the torn down temple at Jerusalem, to living in a strange land as exiles not of their own, the people of God looked for the saving one. From the countryside and seashores, from enslavement and servitude, as others ruled their every day as empire, the people of God listened for the redeeming one. We've been encouraged in this Advent season to look to the lights all around us. Lights that we've strung up on our rooftops, lights around our Christmas tree, the light from candles we have lit on our dining tables, fire in our fireplaces and fire pits, lights twinkling in the night, those that glow with warmth and provide us with a sense of security when the darkness falls. The lights abound in my neighborhood and I am blessed to see them, to see all the lights, the over-the-top lights, the gaudy lights, the commercial lights, the comical ones and more. Our homes bear the lights in so many ways and our hearts do too. 
As we listen to the words of the prophets and the message of the angels, the embers of faith from within our souls are are ignited once again by the wisdom of God's spirit that speaks to us of promises of hope and peace and love and joy. These are ancient assurances associated with expectations of a new ruler who will emerge from the old lineage of David to overcome all oppression, to bring forth the kingdom of God. The prophecies reveal that a little town with an over-occupied inn and manger out back will serve as the open-air throne room for the one who, well, the one who comes to be the embodiment of God's goodwill. With star overhead, it is the Christ child, Mary and Joseph's sons, who will draw shepherds from the hillsides and magi from far off lands, who will be the subject of angels' songs and the recipient of the world's praise. Look down from the sky, look into the manger, there is the star child, the one we seek. Scientists and astronomers tell us that in reality, the Christmas star made by what looks to be the collision of Jupiter and Saturn isn't really a collision, but because that would really be bad news for 2020, friends. Let's have some good news for 2020 instead. You know, that one bright super point of light is really an alignment of the two planets that actually happened a few weeks ago, but from Earth, we are seeing it now, something that happened a while ago. Why? Well, quoting Hardigan again, our line of sight is different because we're orbiting quickly around the sun. We're orbiting quickly around the sun. There are very few people alive in 2020 who would agree with the quickness of our Earth's orbit this year. Our orbit this year, well, this year has been one heck of a year. The orbit has been excruciatingly, excruciatingly. It's been horrible. It's been slow. And it's been sad. And it's been tragic. For so many, as pandemic continues and poverty increases and people still suffer, speed up, O oh Earth, speed up. Yet this event of planetary alignment called a great conjunction is still helpful to us as we celebrate Christmas. Christmas, an event of great light to be sure, but also one of greater life and greatest love when the divinity of our creator collides with the humanity of the created. Our needs for healing and, and mercy and justice now in holy conjunction with God's good and generous and gracious will. What a wonderful collision this Christ child is. And from this moment of togetherness, an entire new universal order is born by which the eternal grace of the highest and holy one glows from within the heart of a little itty bitty babe and becomes for you and for me and for all the world once again, the ancient message born anew this very night, God with us. As Diana Butler Bass writes, this is the night for Christians through which all searching finds meaning, that God is not far off but near, with and within, that God, since before the beginning of all things, long before 1226, God chose to dwell with us. This would have happened whether or not sin entered the world, she writes. This happened because God chose freely, out of joy and beauty, to dwell with us. 
creation here on this orbiting planet, the third rock from the sun. This is the longing for all that was and all that is and all that is to come. And this is the foundation of the way of life we call Christianity, that God is with all of us in the here and the now. Here and now, now is once again our invitation for our lives to be in conjunction with God's will. Such is the gift given to us to receive an invitation with Christmas. Do not wander aimlessly or with despair or without benefit of loved ones, our siblings in Christ, humans made of all things real and redeemed by all things grace. To place our feet and our future and our very souls into orbit again around the sun who is the star of our life named Jesus. How will you live anew in response to the gift that is given with Christmas? How will your life shine with this truth? Christ is born. Oh, see how much brighter the dark night looks twinkling with forgiveness, shining with saving grace because of Christ's birth. Oh, listen to the song in the air. There's a star in the sky. There's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry. And the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing for the manger of Bethlehem cradles the king. How blessed are we to see, how blessed are we to hear, how blessed are we by the conjunction <laughs> of God's grace and our human need. How blessed are we to receive the gift of life and of love and of light again. Let us pray. As lights are present in this holiday season, O God, let there be light within our hearts. As we turn on lights to our trees and to our homes, we express hope for the light of Christ to be more and more evident in our world. May the light of Jesus' presence shine in the forgiveness we offer towards and for one another. May it shine in our expressions of justice and equality to all. May the light shine in the care we provide for each person, for all who still sit in darkness because of poverty and violence, abuse, war, disasters, discrimination, and all forms of sin. God, give us Christmas peace to share with one another. For all who seek to be healed from sickness and pain, for children young and old in need of a friend or home, for parents and grandparents who care for us, God, give us Christmas love to help us care for one another. For all who still await a dawning of freedom, wholeness, and grace, God, give us Christmas hope for all who need a better life, for, need, for those who need healing, this night. For all who care for the sick, the prisoners, the poor, and the grieving, and the children who wish and the old folks who dream this night, God, give us Christmas joy so that we can serve our world. Let there be light in our cities, in our homes, and in our souls. In the name of your star child and our savior, Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. The blessings of God for a safe, healthy, and hope-filled Merry Christmas be yours. The prayers of this congregation, the First United Methodist Church of Park Ridge, are with you for hope and peace and love and joy to reside in your home and in your heart. May the light of Christ shine upon you now and always. Peace be with you and Merry Christmas. Amen? Amen. This is Dan Dorsey, and I want to wish everyone in the church, members, friends, and all, the very blessed and Merry Christmas, and I hope send God's love to all of you. Thank you. I'm Nikki Doctor, and I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, everybody. Merry Christmas. We miss you, and we're sending love from Alabama. Hope you have a wonderful holiday. Merry Christmas. Hi, I would like to wish all of the members of our family, church, and otherwise, a very Merry Christmas. May the spirit of the season be with you in this time and always. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hi, my name is Linda Ritz, and I'd like to wish all of my FUMC friends and family a very Merry Christmas. Merry 
Christmas from the Lane family. From camels to kings, Merry Christmas from the Lanes. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. everyone. God bless. <laughs>